Yeah, first, uh, uh, Cayman Rucker is such a valuable part of this program. Uh, he is uh, tough, he's smart, he's a great leader, he's the fourth leading pass rusher in the country, and uh, he's got to be dominant for us next year. And, uh, and, and we're just so excited about him moving forward. Uh, we've been through nine practices, and it's a, a great competition, a lot of energy uh, on the field. Players are having fun. Um, we're we're kind of like we were two years ago. You you lose four starters in the offensive line. You lose a number one draft choice at quarterback. A lot of question marks on our team. Uh, got a lot of uh, the older guys that are out. Four receivers are out for spring. Two tight ends are out for spring. Uh, some safeties are are not being able to have contact. So uh, a lot of young guys are getting work. It's it's fun to watch them work. Uh, all the practices have been and been pretty good. Uh, they've all competed really well. They've been about even, except uh, last Thursday the uh, uh, defense totally dominated, and that's good, uh, especially in the spring that, that uh, the defense stepped up. But we've had a very, very physical spring. Uh, guys are getting after it. They're hitting every day. We had a long scrimmage that was uh, a full-speed tackle on Saturday, and, and we're working a lot live with the kicking game, and we haven't done that much in the past. But we've, we've got to find more depth. Uh, we, we've got to do a better job running the ball. We've got to do a better job stopping the run. We've got to do a better job in special teams. And then we, we said that uh, we've got to um, limit penalties. Uh, we've got to force more turnovers. Uh, and at the same time, we, we've got to do a better job of, of continuing to create explosives but stop explosives. And, and Jeff went back and looked at every explosive play we gave up last year, and most of them were because of missed assignments. So that, that's something that we're working on really, really hard. Um, fans will be excited. We've got the uh, ACC Network coming in for Saturday's practice. We decided to have them do a practice instead of do our spring game because we didn't want everybody on TV seeing our spring game. Um, we, we've got some new things going on that we're doing. Um, and, and then we'll have the spring game at 3 o'clock uh, for our fans uh, on the 20th. Uh, but this uh, Saturday morning, ACC Network will be out for all the uh, the practice sessions. Um, good competition at quarterback. Uh, both guys are playing really, really well. Uh, it's fun. Max is what we hoped he would be. He's he's big. He's strong. He's he's been very accurate. Uh, and and Connor probably had his best day today. So he continues to get better. Um, running back role. You we we're excited about uh, uh, Darwin Barlow. Uh, he had a really good scrimmage on Saturday and, and looked the best he has looked. He made a couple of good plays again today. Uh, Davion Goss is a, a very good freshman. Uh, Caleb Hood we're concerned about. He's, he's still out with his hamstring. So uh, he's, he's missed um, most of spring. I think he was out here maybe two days in short. So uh, that, that bothers us. Uh, young wide receivers are looking really, really good. Uh, so that's been fun. Uh, the older guys are being out. Uh, I'm seeing some uh, um, toughness in the offensive line. Randy's done a good job of, of losing four starters and putting a new bunch together, and, and they're competing. And we got two new ones coming in at the end, so it's going to be fun to watch those guys go. Um, Ted Monachino is, is uh, really bringing along our defensive line. Travis Shaw has played by far the best he's ever played since he's been here. So we have had really good practices with him. Um, and um, Javari Ritzy has, has been very active inside. And, and uh, so both of those guys have stepped up and, and played well. And then we're, we're still continuing to, to work at building depth um, with uh, Amari Campbell playing with power. And, and then we've got four other young linebackers with two coming in that, that uh, need to step up. They're doing well. Uh, it's a different one every day. So we've got to uh, come out of spring practice with, uh, with those guys stepping up. And, and um, we're really talented in the secondary. I've been impressed with Jakeem Harris uh, and, and uh, Stick Lane stepped up. Uh, so those guys are, are uh, along with the guys that we already had and Stick uh, not coming till uh, June and then having a hamstring pull. He's, he's playing really, really well right now. And uh, the same thing with uh, um, Stewart, the, the junior college player that came in, he's doing a good job at corner, and Huzzy's back at corner, so that helps us as well. Caleb Cost has been out a couple of days, uh, but most of the time he's with the baseball team. Questions? With respect to Max, 
he's got a ton of experience and grew up with his dad in football. Have you seen a lot of that here? And how much does that kind of help Connor being around a guy who is just oozing football pretty much his whole life? Yeah, Max uh, Johnson's thrown over 900 balls in the SEC. So he's been in, in, in big arenas. He's been in big games. He's been hit. Uh, he's um, um, played at, at two of the top SEC schools. So he brings a lot of experience and confidence in here. And I think it's helped Connor. Connor's really competing. So as I said, he had his best day. He had a good scrimmage on Saturday. He had his best practice today. And you see we're sitting out here late, and there's a – uh, quarterbacks down there throwing now, so they they stay out late and throw. But uh, uh, we we've got a a good player in uh, Max and Connor's really competing, uh, so they're they're both playing at a high level right now. As a follow up to Max, when we talked to him back in it was February, he kind of scoffed a little bit about the notion of being a game manager, being described as a game manager, and he said there's a lot more to his game. What have you seen from his game that is in above what a game manager would be? You know, like Drake and Sam, he runs much better than we thought he did. We thought he could run well, but at 6'5", 230, he can really run. So he's he's made some plays with uh, scrambles that have really surprised us. So uh, that that was a real positive, and he's got a real strong arm. So I, I think the, the fact that somebody would call him a game manager is probably because his dad won a Super Bowl, and he, he was raised like Drake and, and, and Sam in a quarterback family, and um, everybody knows who they are, but they, they've been studying football since they were little kids. So he's, uh, he, he's, uh, he's been very impressive. He'll be fun for people to watch in the spring game. Mac, you said you, had, you said you had a long scrimmage the other day and kind of wanted to get into that with you. Like, Can you give us sort of a, a full breakdown of what you guys came out of there with just in terms of an assessment, like good, bad? Yeah. Well, what, what, what were the thoughts that you came out of there with? The first thing uh, is that we uh, didn't get anybody hurt. So and hit for two hours. So that that was really good. Like tackle all the way uh, to the ground. Yes. Type deal. Yeah. yeah. We had a game, and and we had uh, we've had live punt, punt block and return. We had uh, two live kickoffs Saturday. So we're really trying to get better in our kicking game, and we we've got to develop more depth. We've said it every year, and we haven't done it. So we've got to. I mean, and that's that's one thing that Jeff Collins is all into. He's very positive. He's very upbeat. He's very inclusive. But he, he, like me, feels like we've got to play too deep, and that'll help us where we're not tired at the end of the year and, and, and drop off. And, and we are playing our best players on special teams. So we are working really, really hard every day. We're, we're incorporating live special teams into practice. We've never done that. So we're, we're going after it. We're, we, we, that's another area we've just got to step up. And, and another area that we've we've looked at, Adam, is, is we, we have to make people hurt. So we're looking at every individual player and his body, and we've got our trainer, our nutritionist, and our strength coach meeting with the coach every day before practice to look at every guy that's out there, and especially somebody who's had a pull, and say, what's, what, what's his history, why, and what can we do to make sure uh, nutrition has to be different, uh, hydration has to be different, Maybe the stretching has to be different. What are we missing that we're having too many pulls? So we're looking at all that. Um, I thought Saturday both quarterbacks, we, we had our, our goals. Both quarterbacks looked good. We didn't run uh, Omarion very much, so the two running backs that were out there, uh, Darwin really did some good things, and he did better Saturday than he had done in the other practices, so that was good in a game setting. Um, and then the offensive line's been impressive. They're, they're getting better. They got a ways to go, but they're they're getting better. We got those huge, two huge tackles. Um, but uh, um, Austin Blasky's done a good job. Uh, like um, we, we had with our, our center last year, he's he's continued to to grow. Um, and and then Willie's been tough as nails, and he's a good leader, so that's really helped us. Uh, still looking at the other guard position, but you you've got guys. Uh, um, uh, like uh, Aiden Banfield, that, that's a, a tough young guy that's really stepped up and doing some good things. You've got R.J. Grigsby, uh, but you, you've got Adorno and Malik McGowan, and both of them are playing and, and doing some good things. So it's uh, it's fun to watch them. Um, and and then you you've got um, um, guys that tackle that that uh, um, Trey Green's playing much better than he's played. He stayed healthy number one, but he's lost a lot of weight and he. 
he's uh, he's really done a good job. Uh, tight ends, your your um, you know your two starters are out, so it's been really good for Jake Johnson to get a good look. And wide receivers, you got a bunch of young ones. Uh, Chris Culliver made one of the best catches I've ever seen in the end zone Saturday. Is one of those one-handed deals, and and uh, Jordan Ship just continues to impress. And um, you start looking at uh, uh, Alex Taylor is really good, and and uh, Barry Green's real fast. So those guys are what we thought they were as as we came in. Uh, defensively, we're just better. We're we're being really aggressive. He's blitzing a lot. He's disguising a lot and blitzing, which has surprised the quarterbacks. Um, uh, Des Evans has stepped up. He and, and Bo Atkinson both can play where they are. Uh, we've got to find a guy behind Kamen um, at, at the uh, Jack position. Uh, inside, uh, you start looking at guys. Um, we, we know Kevin Hester, but I, I mentioned Travis and, and uh, Javari Ritzy. Um, and, and also um, Joel Starlings has made some plays. He stepped up and, and done a good job in some areas. We're playing uh, Janai Norwood both ways. He played defensive tackle the first eight practices, and now today he moved over to offensive tackle. So he'll be uh, at the end of the spring. We'll look at it and see where he, he fits the best, but he's really a good athlete, and, and we've looked at him. Um, and like I said, the young linebackers are, are making some plays, and uh, so it's it's fun to watch, watch all these guys play and try to figure out who's going to be out there. So Matt, appreciate that. As far as the passing game, I mean, what was the, how'd you kind of split up, you know, which quarterback worked with which receivers? Like, did one have more returning or yeah. experienced guys, one have more younger guys? It's a great question. And, and uh, spring practices are going to be different now with the portal. Everybody's thinner. So it's your, you've got to really look at spring games and you've got to look at spring practice. So what we've done is, is our, our blue offense is the first offense and our white offense is the second offense. We have rotated. Connor and um, Max every time uh, one of them takes blue, one of them takes white, and then we flip it. So they've had exactly the same number of plays with the blue and the white, and then we haven't played the younger quarterbacks much. Uh, Merdinger came in and got a a 10-play series at the end of the scrimmage the other day, but uh, we are giving those guys uh, the same advantage. We said, is it bad if they're playing with the white? And the whites not as, as experienced or not as good right now. You know what? Both of them are playing with the white, so they're they're both having exactly the same opportunities. And then we got to figure out which one's playing the best. Some of the guys uh, we talked to a few of them about two weeks ago. They were talking about Coach Collins' with intensity, and he said he apologized to him when he first met with him. Said, "I'm going to apologize now for all the things I'm going to say to you over the next six months." What has the difference been? hearing a voice like that on defense, as, and not to criticize Gene, but it's just different than Gene. And how do you think the guys are responding to the way he goes about things? You know, Gene and, and uh, Jay Bateman were both really good at what they do. And it worked great for us some, and it didn't work as well some. Um, I would think Jeff's kind of in between the, the two. He's a, uh, he's a very upbeat, positive. He lifts them up. He's like a kid. He run around and chest bumps them, and he... He high fives them, and he's cutting up with them, and uh, he, he's uh, uh, he's all inclusive with everybody. He knows everybody's name. He, he's uh, he's really aggressive but simple. Um, so I, I really like what I see, and the kids are responding to it. Uh, the Thursday practice, I don't think the offense made a first down. I mean, it's the most dominant I've seen since we've been here. And then Saturday was more even, and today was more even, but. Uh, he is um, he's very confident and gives them confidence, but he's fun. He, he has fun in everything he does, and I think that's, uh, that's something that he, he brings. He just, uh, he's a breath of fresh air when you, you look at every day. It's, it's like he's having the most fun he's ever had in his life. You mentioned a few minutes ago that he, he cited that Mr. Simons last year has been one of the big issues and that there's also a lot of disguising. How do you work in disguising a lot when it's not going to be part of the assignment with the group that maybe had some issues with Mrs. Simons? Uh, th- he, um, I hired him because he runs a very similar defense to what we've been running for the five years we've been here. So there, there wouldn't be a lot of new teaching for the players. I asked him as much as he could to use a lot of the terminology, and he's done that. So there's a, a quick learning curve. 
And what he's doing is he's, uh, I always love the fact that you could look complicated and be simple. And that's what he's doing. He's simplifying calls. Well, he's not doing as much, but he's being more aggressive with what it is. And, and that's, that's been the fun thing for them. But, but, just, but just listening to them, they're really buying into it. And that's the thing. I go talk to them at lunch or what do you think, what do you see different, and, uh, and they're all in. Back, back when you played coach, all practices seemed to be physical. But then you kind of got, got away from it. Are we going back to that, to, to, when, like when you played back in the days, more physical practices? Yeah. You know, we had so many players, and, and everybody just hit all the time, and nobody ever worried about it. And Shoot, if you had a concussion when I played, they said, how many fingers? And I'd say two, and they'd say, that's close enough. Get back in there, son. Uh, go, yeah, yeah. And our, and our, our water was in a hose, and, and they had salt tablets, and those were supposed to help you get through the last part of practice. And, um, and we ran sprints till we dropped after it was over. So uh, the only thing I can figure is we didn't work near as hard as we all thought we did or we would have died. Because we didn't, we didn't have nutritionists. We didn't have strength programs. When I was at Florida State, you'd walk by and they'd say, "There's a universal gym. If it's open, use it some." I mean, that, that was your strength coach. So, kids are better taken care of in so many ways now than they were then. We got a GPS to see how much they can run. Um, so, what we're trying to do is is continue to be physical. And 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 the the one of the real arts in coaching is how much can you hit. How much can you be game-like and stay healthy? And and that's just what you do. And and we we're just we're we're really pushing the the limit to make sure that we can get as much physical activity as we can get. Uh, continue to grow to get tougher and and try to keep everybody healthy. Mac, you mentioned Travis Shaw is somebody I, I think you said playing better than he ever has. I mean, not to sound too dramatic with this, but do you think like? You know, it's sort of now or never for him, or has that been impressed upon him that, like, you know, these next steps have to be made in his development? I think it's more uh, it's his time. You know, a lot of the young guys that uh, are, have so much publicity and they're so big and they're so dominant in high school, then they get to college and they're playing against a, a different group of people and things happen faster for them. And a lot of young ones that are big linemen don't, don't come through. Zach Rice is playing better right now than he's played for two years and those guys get so much publicity right. um, and and I think Ted sitting down with him and talking to him about the NFL um, Brian Simmons sitting down with him saying you know you you're, you're a, uh, a number one draft choice about to happen you got to make it happen though it, it's uh, you you've been here two years and uh, we've some seen some improvement we've seen some production but it's time man it's time uh, so step up and let's start being who you who you came here to be. And he's really responded to that. He's been really positive in practice. He's fought through some injuries. The um, uh, Maybe the second day in shorts, he really twisted his knee, and I thought he was hurt bad. And he laid there for a second, and he touched it and got up and went right back into practice, and he hadn't done that in the past. So I'm, yeah. I'm really, really pleased with what I see with his uh, – his growth, his toughness, and, and I think Ted and, and Jimmy Lindsay is, is here to help too. So he's got two really experienced, uh, long-time successful defensive line coaches to help him. Yeah, in the past, you might not have seen him the rest of practice. We talked no. about anything, right? Yeah. No, and, and that's just who he was. He, if he got hurt, it, it's hard for him. And right now, he's fighting through it. He got a cramp the other day in practice because he's working so hard. Um, so he's And he's working some with the blue team. So it's... I'm really encouraged with him, for him and, and with him. What surprised you the most about just Jeff as a, as a coach slash person since he, he joined you? You know, when you, you coached against him, you, you saw the Waffle House and you saw him <laughs> lifting weights before games and all that. And, and what you see when he gets here is he's really smart, he's really driven, he's really nice, he's very thoughtful. And I think that was to draw attention to his program. I really do, and here he, he doesn't do any of that here. He, he just, but he's fun. Uh, the thing that I, 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 I have trouble with people in our building who have low energy. That really wears me out because it's a high energy business, and he is high energy. And I mean, he comes in like he's on pills in the morning at six, and he leaves at at night like he's hyped, and 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 that's just he has fun. 
and and I think he's 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 helped our building by bringing that fund to the building. Mac, you got you mentioned the portal, and how do you, you had two quarterbacks who are fighting for the job. One could still leave. Uh, how do you handle that between what's best for the kid and what's best for your program? Yeah, Art, that's a great question. I, I think we're eight days away from the portal. It's the the sixteenth. Um, and the, the portal will come the 16th, and we won't even play our spring game till the 20th. So we could have somebody leave the 16th and not be here for the game. We could have somebody tell somebody they're going into the portal on the, the 20th uh, and play in the spring game and walk into my office afterwards and say, man, I'm out of here. I'm, I'm going to the portal. Um, so art is just different. You, you try to, to keep an open uh, conversation with them. And at the same time, we're, we're in the kid business, so we, we want what's best for the kid. And like our two quarterbacks, we don't know which one's going to start. It was that way with uh, um, Drake. really Drake and, and uh, Jacoby uh, Criswell, but it was also that way with those three when Sam got here. Mm -hmm. And you, you want to watch them go through summer. You want to watch them compete and lead uh, to see who really earns the spot at the end of summer. And, and into preseason. So, um, but we have all since I've been here, and since the portal came on, we have been dreadfully honest with every young person, and trying to tell him, here's exactly what we see and where you stand here. And if you don't feel good about this, and you don't think you can change it, then let's help you go somewhere else. And and that's just the the way we are. And and we'll try to help every young person he can. Um, and that, and that's some tough conversations, but you it's have been a plan good. For, to get the third stringer ready in case one of the one of the quarterbacks. Well, it's hard to get a third teamer ready. Yeah. Usually no, you're in trouble. Plan to but, what you're going to do if that happens? Uh, yeah, but we're trying to get a first right now, and we're trying to get two that can play till we get to the third. But today it would be Michael Murdigan. Mac, who do you have? Um, who's getting the reps now that Cayman's not practicing at that spot? I know you said you need to find somebody there like who are you looking at there and who's who may be the most capable at this point yeah the guys in that room right now would be tyler thompson was in there more today uh j Bron harvey's got some lower okay. leg things that he's got to get fixed so i don't know that he'll practice the rest of spring so he would be in that position he's had a really good spring to this point uh, malachi hambrick and uh, uh, curtis simpson so those would be the guys there. Uh, Jeff's even to a point, too, that if Kamen was out and they were all playing good, you could even move um, Bo Atkinson over there yeah. and let him play some. Uh, so, But those would be the guys right now that are competing in that spot. Gotcha. And with Kamen, again, you could wait till after spring to get his finger fixed, but this gives him uh, two more weeks to get ready for weightlifting for the summer and we've seen enough of him, so you're not going to play him a lot anyway. So let's let the young ones be in that position and, and have them force them into earning a spot. Speaking of the young ones, the increase, a little bit of an increase in physicality during the spring, is that because you have so many new faces? You've got to know when you guys sit down and do the evaluations and have the meetings you, you have in the summertime, you got to know a little bit more about some of these guys. So throwing them into the fire you do. would give you a little bit more of that information. Yeah, ab absolutely, and in special teams. We've, we've told them if you if you don't play on special teams, it's hard for you to get a spot because you got to get some coaches' attention. So we're, we're doing the same with them there. And That's we've so told them if you're if you're not ready to do all this, we got it. You're a freshman. You're you're young. But if you want to play in the fall, you got to do it, and you got to do it now. Do you anticipate? Yeah. I'm sorry. Just a follow up to that. Do you anticipate because you had so many freshmen come in that you probably will have a few more that can handle some of those responsibilities in the fall because they will have had eight months here as opposed to someone that comes in June. Yes, they're more like a sophomore. Yeah. Because you you think they they've been through a, a college semester. They've had a nutrition program, they've had a strength program, they've had an off-season program, and they've had a, a spring practice and a lot of meetings with their coaches. So uh, that's one of the true advantages for coming in early. Yeah, Mac, uh, you mentioned the offensive line a little bit earlier. Obviously a lot of you know new guys you know, kind of on that first team and things like that. How have you kind of seen them uh, you know, come together, I guess, you know, in a sense, and you know, establish, try to establish some continuity, and then also like, to what extent would a 
I guess offensive line have like a, a quote unquote chemistry. Like obviously there's an individual yeah. blocking assignment, but I mean working cohesively as a group, how have you kind of see them start? Yeah, I, I, the chemistry is a great word. I, I think this team has great chemistry. Like I thought two years ago, our team did. They're having fun. They're competing. They're getting along. Their coaches are all getting along. They're, they're um, the staff's very close. They're trying to do what's best for each other, and that doesn't happen a lot of a lot of staffs across the country. Um, and and I think that's a, a, a huge part of this. Um, but but chemistry with players is, um, you know, that that's got to be with the coach and each other. And um, Coach Dungey really helped us with some things. He said he he uh, he told the receivers. He said, "Where where are the receivers?" And they were all sitting back there together. And he said, good. He said, how much you want to win an ACC championship? And they all threw their hands up. And he said, how much you want to win a, a national championship? And they all threw their hands up. And he said, would it be worth it for you to win a national championship if you didn't catch a ball? Not one? And they went, hmm. He said, yeah. Yeah, you got to be all in, man. And he said, until you can really pull for somebody else on your team, even at your expense, you're not going to be where you need to be. You're going to be good. You can't be great. But to be great, you got to be all in. And, and I really feel like that that's what this team is trying to do. And the, the offensive line, which you, you ask about, um, if you think about it, um, Randy's coached all of them except for Blas Blasky. And he's a tough guy at Georgia. He was their sixth guy. We know a lot about him because of Stacy Searles. And, and um, he's come in and... and really fit in and and it's it's been uh, he's tough he's smart he's just like the one we we just had uh that came in from miami because he did a tremendous job for us um and and then you you think about um we feel like that uh, howard sampson has a chance to be really good i mean six eight and 335 coming off the bus he looks good you you put him in, in the Trey Green walking in first. Sally said, we at least look pretty. Uh, and that's true. We, we do when they walk in. And, and Trey's a year older and better. But Randy's had Howard, so he knew exactly yeah. what he was. Um, and he's he's been better than I anticipated he would be coming in. And and then you've got uh, Malik McGowan and Adorno. Been around here for a long time. Zach Rice is going on his, what, third year, second? Third year. Third, maybe. Yeah, third It'll be started of the third. Yeah. Um so he's getting better. So a lot of guys have had a lot of snaps, and that helps us. I think we'll have more depth in the offensive line this year than we've had. Yeah. And you mentioned Trey Green <clears throat> a couple times now. Like, where's his game at right now? How have you seen him develop? And just kind of, you know, where do you see him as a player at this point? I, he's not a guy that, that you just throw out there and he's going to be great right now, but he has improved so much since last year. And he's staying healthy, and he's managing his weight that uh, – we feel like he'll be. He's got a chance to be really good. Matt, maybe, maybe a little bit dramatic, but is this a, a big year for the program? Just, just in, in general. I think that's dramatic. <laughs> no, I, I really think every year is a big year anymore. It's amazing. We have no patience in in our country anymore. We have no patience in our lives. I see coaches making more money than I ever dreamed that coaches would make, and I see them getting fired fast. They're getting fired in the second year, the third year. Uh, if we win 11 next year, everybody will be mad because we didn't win 13, but think we're on our way. And then if you go back and win nine the next, or oh, they're over, they're, he's too old. That's, that's easy at my age. Uh, so we don't worry about any of that. We just want to be the best team we can be. Mac, who, uh, who's taking Drake in the NFL draft? I don't know. Um, I'm actually, uh, today, I'm, I'm having uh, uh, Clyde, uh, Freddie, and uh, Clyde Christensen, Freddie Kitchens, and Ted Monachino and Brian Simmons call all of our pro guys that are going into the NFL this year and sit down with them and explain what the draft really is. Because nobody knows. I've been watching this thing 50 years, and there's been so many kids disappointed because they thought and they heard and they, I'm going to go here and then I'm awful. And, and so they're going to tell them what it's like sitting in that draft room, uh, what happens, uh, what to anticipate, um, don't go to parties, stay by yourself, and then uh, when you make a team, you, you get on that team, you got to make the team. So don't worry about the draft as much. But but I'm going to sit down and have each one of them talk to them about that. There's 
there's some horrible criticism this time of the year, every year. Uh, some of it may be to, to mask somebody uh, because one team wants them more than another one, so they're going to say some bad things about them. Uh, some may be to get attention for media because uh, I watched it when I was in your, your job. Um, so we're going we're, I, I just felt today uh, I made the decision. I'm going to tell the staff, I told Brian this morning, I think it's really important for all those guys to sit down with, with guys that have that experience in that room and tell them exactly what happens in those rooms so they don't get excited about something somebody said. I've, I've seen pro teams call a guy and say, we're going to draft you, never call him back, and two guys later draft somebody else. So it's a, it's a hard process for these young people. How about don't, the guy who said uh, drafting Drake May will get the head coach fired? You saw that one, right? Yeah. You believe that? Uh, no, I don't believe that. I, I think, mean, but you believe I think, yeah. No, well, don't listen to four you know that, right? No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. I wanted to ask you about Howard Sampson. Uh, you just mentioned a few minutes ago that I guess he's maybe surprised a little bit better than you anticipated at this stage. When we talked to him back in January, he said that he viewed this as being a project because he has three years, that he didn't expect to come in right away and be a starter. So what has he done that has surprised you and the staff? And, and how much surprise is Randy maybe of what you see now as opposed to what he saw before he left North Texas? Yeah, we'll, we'll get you guys to talk to Randy because that would be an interesting question for him. What about North Texas as compared to now? What's different? I'm sure you'd say older and more mature, and and he's so big. Uh, I mean, when you, you <laughs> look at uh, he and, and Trey, I mean, you're 6'8 on, on both edges. Uh, and that's got great length. Um, we, we've really challenged our, our defensive guys on uh, uh, fewer penalties. We've challenged our defensive guys on tackles for loss and sacks. So he's been blocking um, Cam and Rucker every day. So that'll make you better or make you quit. I mean, because he is, he, he's hard. And, and we're rewarding the defensive players who have forced penalties. Or sacks. So we've said Travis Shaw is so big and strong, he should force a holding penalty every time or get the sack. So come on, man. Let's do it. Cayman Rucker. And I mean, can't, they can't block Cayman. So you have to have a chip on him if you are. And he's, he's learned enough now when he sees the chip coming, he runs right through their, their middle and runs over them. So he's just so hard to block. So I think that's really helped Howard because he's had to block him every day. And uh, Kamen came up to me the other day and he said, Coach, offensive line's better. It's harder to get there. So I'm, I'm impressed. So, so that's really, really good. But I think with he and um, uh, Travion Gray being that long, you got to rush way around them. And they, they're just huge. And then um, um, Leftwich um, he, from Georgia Tech's the same. He's 6'6". 330, 335. So we're going to have three really big tackles that have got length, and, and uh, I think that will really help us. Mike, what, what sort of challenge or difficulty even is it in grading these quarterbacks with the youth you have just in spring at wideout? Because, I mean, obviously, you know, you need a guy to run a right route and separate to yeah. be able to put the ball on him. I mean, like, yeah. is that – have you got? Have you all found yourselves like, look, if that's someone with more experience, that ball's completed in terms of when you're grading these guys out? Adam, we have, and it, it's a good question. That's why we felt like we had to make sure that they were they were throwing to the same people uh, all through the practice, so one of them didn't have an advantage over the other one sure. because this receiver is more experienced than this one. And you you think you you've got four receivers out that are really good players, and you got two tight ends out that are both starters. Yeah. Um, so we we've we have looked at that and we've told the quarterbacks, uh, don't be frustrated. Um, try to handle it when when things are happening bad. That, that's what happened to the offense the other day. They got their head down when things weren't going well, and they come. I, I got mad at them, but they they competed. They tried hard. They just didn't flip it. And that's what we said. You got to flip it. You we we've had uh, uh, we've got to do a better job of winning games when we don't play our best. We haven't done very good at that, and we've got to do that. We, we can't just say, well, we, we weren't on today. Uh, well, Drake didn't play good. We, we can't do that. We've got to figure out ways to win when we're not playing our best because you're not always going to play your best. And Virginia was a great example. I mean, that's a game we had to figure out a way to win as coaches, and we didn't do that, and as players. 
So that, that's what we're working hard on. So we've told them that these guys may be playing. So don't, don't get mad at them. Let's work with them. And, and let's just handle it and do it. And, and Connor and Max are both mature. They're both real smart. They both like each other. They're both really upbeat and positive. Uh, and they just, you, you wouldn't see any reaction out of them. Um, because some of them are working with, uh, like uh, Andrew Rosinski's a uh, freshman defensive tackle, I mean offensive tackle working against Des Evans. Some, it's going to be a sack. Yeah. And, and they just, I just tell him, run by them. They just sit there and handle it. And I, I've been very impressed with both quarterbacks. At the, looking at that secondary, how beneficial has it been to really have Fuzzy back at his you know natural position at corner? He pretty much was you know star all last year. How beneficial has it been just having him at, at corner? I thought it really hurt us last year when he had to move inside. It, it hurt us that uh, DeAndre Boykins didn't get to play because he's tough and smart and loves football and played a lot of football for us. But it, it was a, a double problem when we moved our best corner inside. He made an outstanding interception today. Just broke on a ball from nowhere and, and would have scored with it. And he's done that two or three times. So we need him back at corner. And then you've got Marcus Allen out for the rest of spring. So that really helps you have to get these other guys ready. So we're having to, we'll be deeper at corner than we've been. And we'll be deeper at safety than we've been. And then we're looking, we're going to look at DeAndre Boykins at safety and star. Uh, because we got Caleb Cost, and, and then we have moved uh, uh, Trey Miller into star some. Uh, and he's played really well there. So you've got uh, Caleb Cost, Trey Miller, and uh, uh, Ty. Uh, so you've got all those guys back now there. And uh, another guy that's really stepped up at corners, Ty Adams. He's intercepted a ball about every day. So he's doing some good things. And he had a broken wrist, and we didn't know how much he was going to get to do, and he's done a good job. He's a playmaker, isn't he? He really is. He is. And, and um, he's got to tackle better. He's quarterback, you know, yeah. coming out of high school. So he, he's uh, – but he can just make plays. It just, it's, it's amazing. He gets his – and he's got great hands. And he's a really good athlete, so he's got some length. Uh, Zion Ferguson, we got some guys now that, that are back there. you got uh, – um, Thompson and Patterson and, and uh, uh, Malcolm Ziegler. Malcolm intercepted a ball today. Uh, he uh, he ran down. Uh, Connor had a quarterback draw for about 60 yards on Saturday, and Malcolm ran him down. So he's he's uh, he's got big time ability. So it's fun to watch all these young ones and and, and see them uh, improve every day. Tyreen Stewart is a little bit different than those guys because he's already played in junior college. Is how is he balancing the sense of urgency because he only has two years with also being a very new guy and new at this level? A little bit of like a freshman in, in some ways. Yeah, he's uh, real quiet. Uh, it's all different. I think there were about 200 people in his hometown, maybe 800. Uh, I asked him one day, hey, you like Chapel Hill? He said, it's so big. And I thought, hmm. <laughs> That's I'm unusual. For, yeah. 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 It's 336 people. Is it 336? Uh, we said, uh, I said, how many in your high school? He said, not many. So, I mean, it was small. So he hit the quarterback the other day, and we said, you can't hit the quarterback. And he said, oh, really? We always did. And I thought, yeah, you, you did. Uh, but, he, but the kids love him, and uh, his nickname's Dooley. And I asked him why, and he said, my grandmother started calling me that, and I don't know why. So... Dooley, like Joe Dooley? Yeah. Okay. So we call him Dooley. All right. Uh, it's easier than Tyran. So, but but he's doing a really good job. He's tough. He's smart. He's, uh, they're, they're liking to play. And when you've got great competition, everybody has to play better. Because we're, we're grading them every minute of every day. And it was funny. Uh, Brian Simmons talked to him and said, um, I used to go as a scout. And I'd go into all of the schools and say, uh, does he like football? And he said, every coach always says he loves football. And he said, so I learned, I had to watch to see if he loved football. Does he show up early? Is he working extra? Does he hustle ever play? Does he stay on the field and not get hurt? Um, is he going by all the rules? And, and he said, that's what I did. Well, Coach Dungey came in and told him the same thing. He said, if you're late to see me, then I either think you don't respect me or you don't want to play. Period. 
I said, it's, it's easy. I don't, I don't have to ask those questions. I know those questions. And he said the same thing. If, if you're not going to do, if you're not going to hustle every day, you don't want to play. You say you want to play, but you don't because show me. Don't tell me. And that's kind of the attitude we've had with these kids. I don't want to hear it. Show me. How, I hadn't even thought about asking this, but how important is Brian Simmons' voice to this team and this program in terms of he's so current? Yeah, I don't mean that as a slight against anyone else, yeah. but like he's so, you know, I mean, he's obviously so good, a tremendous yeah. player, but just, you know, he's so current. You know what I mean? Well, he's current and he's been where they want to be. And that's why I love having a Ted Monachino. They all want to be in the NFL. I love having a Clyde Christensen. Yeah. I'm painting. He's coached the best quarterbacks ever. So he's telling quarterbacks what the best quarterbacks ever have heard. Uh, Freddie Kitchens, head coach in the NFL. They all want to be in the NFL. And then you get Brian Simmons, who's a first-round draft choice, red-shirted here, yeah. first-round draft choice, uh, plays a long time in the NFL, will be in the Hall of Fame. And then he comes back and he's a scout for eight years, and then he's a high school coach for eight years. So, and and he he just he's really tough, and he's very direct. So, the other day he said, "You know what? They they need to do this this this." I don't, why don't you tell him that? Tell him after practice. And he did. And he said, "I don't want to be negative all the time," but he said, "I've seen guys on on a plane on a trip for the NFL get cut while they're on the trip." So come on, man! Don't don't sit around and think this is easy. This isn't easy. And if you're not starting here, you're not going to play in the NFL. So understand. And so he, but he also helped them with what Coach Dungey said about here's who you are, here's what you need to see, and you're either going to do this or you're not. Well, sort of sniffing relatable. out the BS type deal. Yeah, yeah. He's obviously very relatable. He's yeah. Yeah. checked all these different football yeah. boxes. And they love him, and he's around them all the time, each lunch with them every day. Uh, and I see him. He'll walk over and say, Meh. So he's he's got a um, – and, and he sat down with Travis, and he was one of the ones to say, um, here's the truth. Here's where you are. Here's what I see. Um, and I need to see more. And I think he's really helped as well. Heck, it seems like you guys haven't shown Jakeen too much coming in from, uh, from uh, <laughs> NC State. <laughs> Do what? You guys haven't shown, picked on Jakeen too much coming in from uh, from NC State. No, he's he's been really good, but that's the respect you have. That that wouldn't be fair to him coming in, and he's uh, he's limited. He'll be in the spring game in a in a yellow like uh, I think uh, Geo Biggers was last year. He and uh, Will Hardy, both are back there. I, we think he's really good. He's having a good spring, and he he would have made a big hit Saturday if he was live. Um, and he's a happy kid. He's a fun kid. Uh, but we also feel like it put him in a very uncomfortable position if we keep asking about NC State. That's not That's not why he came. Okay? You guys good? All right, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.